One of the things that will make you a safer, more confident instrument pilot is having known power settings that you've practiced ahead of time. And I know a lot of you have heard that concept, but in this video I'm going to show you how you can be very, very specific about those configurations and how you can work on them when you go out on IFR skill building days. I'm Jason Miller, a full-time professional flight instructor. On the Finer Points channel, you can join me as I bring you tips and tricks that I've learned from 20 years on the flight line. If you haven't seen it, do note that we have an instrument course now available in the Ground School app. You can get a free three-day trial. Uh, just follow the link in the description. Okay, so I tell all of my instrument students that there are six configurations that we're gonna practice. Let's go to the airplane and I will show you those six configurations. All right, aviators, welcome back to the practice area. Today we're working on the six configurations for IFR flying and it will be a huge benefit to you if you can practice these ahead of time and know known power settings for the configurations that you want in the airplane. And it doesn't matter what airplane you're flying, uh, just trust me, if you know exactly what power setting you're going for for any given phase of flight, uh, it's going to make you a safer, more confident instrument pilot for sure. So here you join me and we are at cruise level. Cruise power, I mean, it kind of doesn't matter where you set cruise power as long as it's in the green, but we're going to pick something and plant a flag on it for the purposes of training. We're going to say that 2400 RPM is is our cruise level power setting so that when we're cruising between airports we're operating at 2400 rpm uh, notice that when you set your power by the way uh, you want to aim real small you want to be specific like where is the power exactly where's the end of that needle and also remember that in a fixed pitch propeller uh, airplane that if you want say 2200 rpm and you're slowing down you should set it a little bit high 2250, 2225, because by the time you slow down, so will the propeller. And the opposite, speeding up, right? So if, if you know that you're going from 2200 RPM to 2400 RPM, then what you would do is set it at 2350 or 2375, expecting that it'll speed up as you do. All right, so here's cruise power. Cruise power is a known setting. Uh, there's two other level power settings that we're gonna lump in with our six IFR. Uh, configurations here. One of them is approach level. Now at approach level you want to be a little bit faster than 90 knots but you don't want to be at cruise power, right? You know, like we have to do all these things like procedure turns and maneuvering. You want to be in the neighborhood of your approach speed but not directly at it. So we're going to call 2200 RPM our approach level power setting. Now remember what I said, I'm going to set it just a little bit high here and then we're going to watch our heading, divide our attention, Make sure we don't lose altitude. Make sure we slow down instead of go down. All right? Always fine tuning the power setting on 2200. Now you'll see that keeps us a little faster than 90. That keeps us at about 100 knots. Maybe, a, yeah, about 100 knots. So we're 10 knots above our target approach speed. So, you know, if we were capturing a glide path, we could power back, intercept the glide path, and plan a 90 knot descent. Okay, we're not so far out. Uh, of speed range that we couldn't do that. And we're gonna call this approach level. So right when we start flying the approach procedure, we'll take the airplane directly to 2200 RPM. That's our approach level configuration. And you should practice going between these, right? So you should be able to go from approach level to cruise level and hold your altitude, back from cruise level to approach level. And the last level speed is 90 knots proper. I think we'll just need to go down to 2100 RPM or 2050 in this airplane. But what we're looking for here is 90 knots. This is our holding pattern level. Okay, yeah, 2000 RPM actually works by the time we slow down here. So, what do we have in review? Our cruise level uh, configuration is 2400 RPM. Our approach level configuration, 2200 RPM. And here's our holding level at 2000 RPM. There are three more configurations to look at. Um, we're gonna save the hard ones for last. So you know what we got now? We got approach level, um, we got cruise level, approach level, holding level, that's all done. Now what if you have to get out of there? Like, like missed approach or takeoff, VY climb, that's the other one. You have to be able to immediately add full power, keep the aircraft coordinated, and go to a site picture 
that will bring you to your best rate of climb. This is a I need to get the heck out of there configuration. Coordinated, on target speed, holding your sight picture, holding whatever heading you need for the missed approach, full power, practice that. Practice leveling off into approach level and into uh, cruise level. The practice leveling off in a turn is always something worth doing. So there you go. Remember, you can go directly to the power setting. Like if we're going to approach level, I can go directly to 2200 RPM, maybe a little high because we're slowing down, and pitch straight for level. That's the benefit of knowing exactly what power setting I'll be going to. We'll go here to a heading of 030. Good, then you're just kind of fine tuning things. Am I actually on 22 or do I need to fine tune it a little bit? There we go, so we're here at our approach level speed. All right, that's four configurations. That's cruise level, approach level, holding level, and missed approach, or the get the heck out of there configuration. Now the only two left are the descents, precision approach and non-precision approach. So for a precision approach, we're going to do a 90 knot, 500 foot per minute descent, which we deal with in a uh, all by itself in an entirely different lesson. But remember that we slow first to the speed, then we pivot around to the speed, then we pitch for 500. Consider that our primary indicator for pitch, and we're powering to our speed. So see how I knew where I was headed? I knew that 1800 RPM was going to be approximately where I needed to be for this 90 knot, 500 foot per minute descent. But because that's true, I went directly to 1800 and look how close we are to that configuration, right? So. Our power settings so far, we've got 2,400 for a cruise level, 2,200 for approach level, 2,000 for holding level, and 1,800 here for this precision approach descent rate. Now, there's nothing different about a non-precision approach, except that we're going to pick a more aggressive power setting. We're going to go to 1,500 RPM. Again, we're going to hold, uh, this. in this case, we're going to pivot around 90 and we're gonna take whatever descent we get. This is when you really need to go down in a hurry. You wanna make sure that the aircraft is controllable, that you're stabilized, but that you're achieving something greater than 500 feet per minute, something closer to 1,000 feet per minute. And this should be practiced at everything from 1,500 all the way to power at idle. A lot of people say these non-precision approach descents are not stabilized. They're perfectly stabilized. They're just aggressive descents. And you should practice coming out of this non-precision approach descent right into, say, approach level. So let's do that. Here we go into approach level. We're going to go to 2150, remember, because we're going to accelerate. And you can just pitch straight for level. You know that the aircraft's coming, and you know that you're going to end up at about 100 knots. How do you know that? Because these are known power settings. There's 2200 RPM. Boom. Okay? That's approach level. All right, aviators, that's all for this video. I hope you got something out of those tips. Be sure to check out our free three-day trial of the Ground School app. We've got private, instruments, written prep, oral prep, check ride prep, flight videos, scenarios. It's pretty amazing. If you haven't seen the Ground School app, check it out. Also remember that when you renew your AOPA membership, you should select Pilot Protection Services. I'm Jason Miller. You guys are the best fans on the internet. Please leave a comment below if there's a video you'd like to see. Do all that YouTube stuff. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that little alert bell, share far and wide with your friends. But most importantly, until I see you again, be safe and fly your best.